Face off stuff. Okay, so two methodology points. Okay, one is uh, one that you've heard before uh, because uh, it's, it's uh, what do you call it? Do you see okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think that was the message Orton was trying to send. <laughs> I'm tilting it towards you away from him, but uh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, it does make sense. Um, yeah, is the, uh, one of the great things I like doing in general, but especially uh, around the Moadim is asking extremely basic questions and re-examining premises and then getting different answers and then like overturning everything. Okay, so that's hopefully what we're gonna do tonight. We'll do that in a second. Second thing I, I, I realized is, um, I, this is gonna be the third, I think the third Sforno based year that I've given this year. And I think I realized what I like about the Sforno is it feels like investigative journalism. Okay, and what I mean by that is you, he's definitely saying ideas like he is a, a an idea saying you know mafarshim i don't mean that to denigrate others i mean that like many mafarshim you'll have lots and lots of stuff that's like just you know let's say ibn ezra right ibn ezra also has ideas but there's tons of grammar you have to wade through and you know sforno's here to say ideas um but the thing is is like it, it's almost like hearing some you're hearing him tell you tell his version of, of, of like the events in the Chumash. And you start, if, if, if you weren't paying attention carefully, you would think that he is just saying the same thing that you've always like thought. Then you start listening carefully and like, wait a minute, something's going on here. And then you investigate and you have to piece together the clues. And then after you get all the clues, then you can figure out like what his, you have to like construct the narrative the way he understands it and then get the ideas from that. So it's like a different, I don't know, each, each of the Mufarshim has their own flavor. To me, it's a different flavor than the other Mufarshim. And the more I, I uh, experience it, the more I like it. So hopefully we'll get we'll get that tonight. Okay, so the shears called what prompted the Gula. So if I just ask you point blank, why did God take Bnei Yisrael out of Mitzrayim? What would you say? Well, I Basic say, question. No, that's a clarifying question. I mean, in, in the moment itself, I would say because he said he would. Okay. Then the question becomes, why did he say he would in the first place? Okay. Right. So that that that's a fair double uh, question. Now, when I I'm just going to push you a little bit more, uh, because he said he would. Wh when or where? Like, what are you talking about when he says he said he would? To Avraham, I believe. To Avraham. Okay. Can you, can you give me more specific? Not like chapter and verse, but like when to Avraham. Brisbane was sorry, right? Okay, so the covenant between the parts. Let's actually start by looking at that because I did not um, uh, include this in the thing. So Brisbane was sorry is in Brisbane 15. Okay, and uh, let me share the screen here. Uh, whoever gets the page number first can say if you want. Uh, it's only actually uh, a few psukim we're going to read. Thank you. Okay, so. Uh, we're just gonna, I mean, we're not gonna read the whole chapter, just gonna read the the actual content of the bris. So it starts on Pasuk 13, okay? Um, Vayomir Lavram. So God said to Avram, and this at this point, he's still Avram mm -hmm. without the ha. Uh, Yadoateda, you shall certainly know, you should you should surely know, that your offspring will be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Um, Hold on, just a here. Uh, yeah, of Avadum, and they will enslave them, the Inu Osam, and they will afflict them, Arba Me Oshana, for 400 years. Vagan Esagoy Asher Yavodu Dananofi, and also the nation that they that will serve them, that will serve them, that's not a word, that they serve, I will, Dananofi, I will judge. Vahrechen Yetu Birkush Kadal, and afterwards they will go out with great wealth. Okay. So this is the first time that the Mitzrayim thing is stated. Now it doesn't say Mitzrayim and that's one of the whole questions here about like what, where are they being enslaved? But I think plain shot is this is talking about Mitzrayim. Okay, how do you work at the whole 400 years thing? That's a whole other thing. Okay, so I also thought that this is where God says, you know, they're gonna go down the Mitzrayim and I'm gonna take them out. Okay, not so simple. <laughs> All right. Do you, did you have a different answer as to why God took them out of Mitzrayim or was this also your answer? That was also my uh, Okay, me too. Okay, this is also my answer. All right. But not the Sforno's answer, and not God's answer. Like, well, okay, sorry. Well, not God's answer according to, not God's answer, at least let's put it this way. God's answer is not so simple, and then Sforno's take on God's answer is really not so simple. Doesn't he also tell Moshe? Uh, he does tell Moshe, Moshe right. On, yeah. yeah, by the uh, the bush, yeah. yeah. I have another possible answer. It's sure. not really why God passed out. Yeah. It's more like the purpose of this specific thing happening. Okay. As God to set up one time to do a lot of miracles very much right. forever for the rest of this generation. Yeah. So the way that I view that, and it's possible that this is um, uh, not logos, but the way I view that is that's explaining why he took us out in the way that he did. Right. Uh, and, but, but he could have taken us out like, right. you know, 
by night, right? Okay, what, yeah. what is that you're asking that? I'm asking what prompted God, what, 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 why did God take us out of Mitzrayim? Is that a different question than why, did, did, why were we put in Mitzrayim in the first place? No. I mean, sorry, yes, it is a different question than that, yeah. Different. So you're saying... Yeah, it's, it's a separate question. Why did God put us in the time in the first place? And the first time we see that is also here. But I'm not concerned with that for our purposes. I mean, I would think that that would be the same thing. That, that would be, you know, there's some, some uh, like, like, that whole thing was part of the larger process. That it's needed to happen. definitely, so going it, there right. So it's definitely implied here. The only reason I'm not taking it up now is because there is a mock locus about whether, um, I'm going to put it loosely. This is, I'm not saying it in any of the, the terms of the Mepharsham here, but did we need to be enslaved in Mitzrayim in order for there to be some purpose? Let's say like people say, you know, the Jews needed to, you know, experience uh, oppression and uh, slave mentality in order to blah, 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 you know, or was the plan for us to hang out in Mitzrayim, but then it went bad and we became enslaved and then God had to take us out in a different way than he would have uh, originally planned. You know, that is a mach locus and that is a valid question. I, I don't think we're going to need to get into that for this. But uh, right now, I just want to know what what made God take us out. Just period. Period. Meaning there. Were, meaning just we could have just stayed in Egypt forever. Like I guess that. Uh, yeah, forever. we could have stayed in Egypt forever. In fact, we say that in the Haggadah, right? Yeah. If God didn't take us out, then we would have been in Egypt forever. Yeah. It could have been. I mean, it's very similar to what we were just saying. But it right. could have been God took us took us out, but, but He only put us in to take us out. Right. That's also that's also the case. That's also a possibility. Right. Okay. So. Yeah. I'm going to show you, the, the, we're going to focus on three psukim, and I'm going to actually ask you to not look up the psukim uh, here, because these we're going to translate together. Everything else I already have translated, because I want you just to notice the nuances, and it's hard to notice the nuances when you're uh, looking at a translation. Okay, so this is in um, Shamos 2. Okay, in fact, I'll just show you the context here. Okay, context is you know, close enough to the beginning of Shamos. So, Perak Aleph in Shamos. Uh, is Shemos, names, right? Okay, you have the names. They go down to Mitzrayim. B'nai Israel start to multiply. New king arises who doesn't know Yosef. Uh, he says, let's outsmart them. And uh, for whatever his reasons are, they appoint taskmasters or tax masters, depending on how you translate it. Um, they, uh, but the more they afflict them, then the more they increase. Uh, then Mitzrayim starts to put harsh labor on them, embitters their lives. Um, and then the genesis, well, not the genocide campaign, sorry, the um, infant, infanticide, 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 thank you, infanticide campaign for the boys, right? So he tries to get that through the Hebrew midwives. They don't cooperate. Then he assigns it to the nation. All the boys throw into the river. Um, and that takes us to the end of chapter one. Okay, chapter two, birth of Moshe. Yochavah tries to hide him, uh, doesn't succeed, puts him in the, in the basket, Boss Paro finds him. Uh, Miriam is sent along, hooks up the thing with the Yocheved nursing. Moshe grows up, sees the Egyptian abusing the, the Hebrew, uh, intervenes, kills him. Uh, next day, breaks up the fight between the, uh, the two uh, Hebrews. Uh, they say, you know, they're after you. He flees to Midian, swoops in, saves the uh, Yisro's uh, daughters, marries Tzipora, and then... Um, then has Gershom. But Taylor Bain Vayikrash Mo Gershom, Ki Amar Gerha Yisi Ber Sankhria. He named him Gershom because he said, I'm a stranger in a strange land. Okay. Then we get to our Psukim. Okay. Now keep our question in mind about why God took us out. Okay. As we read this. Okay. So, Vayhi Bayamim Harabim Hahain. Okay. So it was in those many days. Okay. Vayamas Melach Mitzrayim, the king of Egypt died and public service announcement. Uh, everyone has to go through this at some point in their lives when you realize how many kings are in the story, right? Okay, so just to make sure we're all on the same page here. So there's the king that Yosef knew, okay? Then there's a new king who arose, which is either an actual new king or the king renewed his decrees, whatever that is, who didn't know Yosef, okay? That king is the one who enslaved B'nai Israel and who killed the boys and who Moshe was fleeing from, okay? Right. That king dies. Then a new king comes up, and the new king is the one that God sends the Makos to and that Moshe interacts with and that has all the dialogue. Okay. okay? And I think it's confusing because in the Haggadah, for example, when we say, you know, uh, Lavan, uh, you know, go learn what Lavan wanted to do to Yaakov, you know, uh, and he was worse than Paro because Paro only wanted to kill the boys and Lavan wanted to uproot everything. I feel like if you did like an MRI and looked at which Paro people think that we're talking about, they think that at that point we're talking about the Paro who Moshe has all the conflict with. It's not, okay, that's, 
So the, the, this is a new part. Uh, the, the, the part who decreed the, the deaths dies. Okay. So then, uh, uh, how do you translate anacha? I, I was thinking about this today. Like, uh, no, uh, that is, I think, nun vav ches or nun ches he. This is anach. So they translate like yagon vanacha. We say that in the Shmona Esrei. So they usually translate it as grown. But when you say the children of Israel anachad from the work, I feel like that's like a teenager complaining, like, oh, uh, you know, like I don't want to do it. But I think think like shofar is a uh, uh, yalala and anacha is like sobbed or like cried, uh, you know, um, in, in pain, right? So so the children of Israel, uh, let's say sobbed for now, okay? We're going to see a lot of synonyms here. Sobbed from the work, okay? Vayizaku, and they cried out. Okay, good, cried out. Vata'al shab'asam el ha'elokim min havoda. Now, shab'a is a, 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 an obscure word also for crying out, okay? And their, their outcry... Uh, Ta'al went up to God from the work. Okay, that's first pasuk. Second pasuk. Vayishma elokim es na. Oh, that's not, not like the masters of their work. Specifically. Right to God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's a that's a fair question. Okay. Um. In fact, you want? Know I'm gonna say just to make it clear. Also, I'm gonna say elokim. Okay. You'll see why. Vayishma elokim es and uh and elokim. Heard there naaka. I had I had to look up. Okay, naaka you rarely see anywhere. Naaka is another word for outcry. Okay, God heard their outcry. Vayiskor Elokim es briso, and Elokim remembered his covenant. Okay, es Avraham es Yitzchak es Yaakov with Avraham, Avraham with Yitzchak, and with Yaakov. Vayar Elokim es bnei Israel, and God saw an Elokim saw the children of Israel, Vayida Elohim, and Elohim knew. <laughs> okay, so first of all, if you see what I mean, it's a lot more complicated than, than God took them out of, so Yosef, there's the question here, why did God take the Israel out of Mitzrayim? So the answer we all said is because of the bris. Which bris? The bris being a with Abraham, where he says, your descendants are going to be enslaved and I'll take them out, right? And I was saying how these psukim, once you see these psukim, it's not so simple, right? So king of Egypt dies, children of Israel sob and they cry out. Outcry goes up to God. God hears their outcry. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I actually want to um, uh, insert the Hebrew words for um, crying because there's so many synonyms here. So that's sobbed. And then they cried out is, uh, is za'aka, Okay. And then their outcry, that's shava'a. And God heard their na'aka, okay? And God remembered his covenant. So he, so like it, a lot of crying, different kinds of crimes going on. And, and some of it's not, doesn't go anywhere. Some of it goes up to God and some of it God hears. But then God remembers his covenant. And then it could have ended there, but then God saw them and God knew, right? Yeah. No, it says... I don't know actually, but I would like to look at it. Let's actually do something though, which I think will make Uncle's more productive. I mean, he's productive. I don't want to <laughs> make it more productive for us. Let's actually list all of the questions. And that way, when we read through Uncle's, we'll see if he answers anything. All right. So, what I, I kind of like implicitly said a bunch of questions here, but what are the questions we need to ask here? Um, what's called, does the Gata have anything on like these Pesukim? Yes. Like on darshaning so these? And are we yeah. going to use that? Uh, no, I, we, it's in the drushas, but we uh, we quote this in the drusha on the Pesukim in Arami Obadavi. Right. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's actually the first year I, I noticed uh, I, I noticed the, the major. There's going to be a major question. Okay. But yeah. But yeah. Okay. Anyway, so uh, what are the questions here? Okay. So, I mean, okay. Firstly, is the obvious question, which is where all the anthropologists yeah. mean? Okay, what uh, with anthropomorphism? You mean like God seeing and hearing? And, and okay, yeah. And, okay, you know, so what? Um, what are? Uh, what does it mean by the anthropomorphisms of um, remembered? Wait, is that the first one? No, no, heard, right? Heard, remembered, heard, saw. remembered, uh, saw, and knew. Another question is, I guess, kind of your question, which is like, what about the this outcry? Uh, uh, caused God to 
to have this reaction. Okay, yeah. Like, is this Chuba or is this? Okay, good. So, so let's first first like ask. Sad. Let's first ask what the outcries are. Okay, right. what is the meaning of these different uh, these different types of crying? Okay, and we have again here um, uh, anacha, zaaka, shavaa, and naaka. And I can't stress enough how weird the words shavaa and naaka are. I mean. To your recollection, have you ever heard those words before? <laughs> I, I think we do use them occasionally. Not Naka, though. That's that's a strange one. Okay, Anaka and Zaka are more common, right? And then the second question you asked was, um, what... Uh, what about these cause God's reaction? Yeah, what about these cause God's response? Yeah. Okay, what else? Like this kind of... Uh, narrative usually would i would think would be like chuva like this yeah this happened all the right time over Tanakh, but right that doesn't, that's not what they did at least not shot right does not seem like to yeah and which is going to be a burden on sforno which is um which is what however we explain these things we need to like is there evidence from the psukim or is he just theorizing you know how does it work yeah i mean also if why, why is it that god heard their naka but they didn't do naka that's another good question yeah um uh oops sorry um, I'm not going to list it because I think it is very easy to say that, um, uh, actually, no, no, I, I'll list it. Hold on a second. Where is the, you should think it's not because I'm right. Okay. That's a good question. I'm going to list it here though. And, uh, why does it say that God heard their Naaka if the Pasuk, uh, if the Pasuk, if it, if it doesn't say that they did Naaka, uh, yeah, Michael. Um, right. Well, I mean, one, that, that question extends, like, how many times is the nation actually crying? Yeah. And which yeah. one is the cry we should be focusing on? But uh, better, I've got a uh, knock uh, Kamina for you. Me, uh, Manav Shah. Me, Manav Shah. Okay. Yeah. Do you need the bris or the outcry? Which okay. one are you waiting for? If it was right. the bris, you didn't need the outcry. And if it was the outcry, you didn't need the bris. Okay. Yeah, good. So, so, um, uh, I, I'm going to actually, um, I, I don't know if that should be part of question two or not. Uh, you do you want to add to that, Ezra, or a different question? I don't think that's really a question because it could be that God's telling God what's going to happen. Yeah. So just because God's going to take them out doesn't mean he's like, this isn't, God isn't, the reason God's taking them out isn't just for us. God's taking them out and for whatever reason, and God's telling Avram that he's going to take them out. Okay, well, but the Pesukim do, does imply that there was a um, remembrance. The, the, yeah, there was a remembrance of the bris and that it somehow played some role. Right, yeah. Right, so so just, just to, I think, we'll, we'll put it, the, Michael's question in a less strong form, even though I like the Naka. Oh, Yosef was saying that that happens, is that sometimes his camera causes his zoom to, to kick him off. <laughs> so he just vanished. Okay, so um, what is the relationship between the these outcries and the bris, okay? Like, would God have, so what about these caused uh, God's response? And um, would God have remembered, that's not how you spell remember, remembered the bris otherwise? Um, yeah, um, Akiva, just to catch up really quickly on the central question is why did God take the Nasra out of Mitzrayim? So we all gave the same answer, which is God promised Abraham. Okay. But then you see the psukim and there's this complex thing going on with crying and remembering and seeing and knowing. And we're trying to like wait our way through that and asking questions right now. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, Yosef had a question, but he's gone now. Yeah. Um, two points. One, it seems here that God's going to judge the nation and then they're going to. In the Brisbane of Asari. Right. Yeah. He's going to take them out because of the judgment. Okay. So uh, that's a good question. I actually want to, for my own self-restraint purposes, I want to not yeah. list questions on the bris of Nimbusarim because that's going to like yeah. lead us feel. I think what we should do though is after we do the Sforno and, and answer these questions, we should look back at the bris of Nimbusarim because it's probably going to be different. And look, it's possible that this is going to lead us to the bris of Nimbusarim, but it's possible that it won't. Okay. And so it's, it's a good question, but I'm just gonna, not going to list it it's, yet. It's not about the judging, I think it's about the Egyptians, not the Jews. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's fun. Can you say something else? Yeah. yeah. Um, was it a bris? Maybe it's just a chat question, so I don't know. But was it a bris with the Avram Yisrael being Yaakov or just Yaakov? So that's a good question also. So let's ask the question, which I've been hinting at this whole time, okay, <laughs> which is um, uh, which bris 
did God remember? Okay, so first of all, was it the bris bin habasarim? Okay, um, was it like special brisos with each of the avos? That doesn't say brisos, even though it looks like it. Okay, brisos weren't invented yet. Uh, the other with all three avos? Yes, two years. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, three avos. Um, yeah. Okay. So, right. That's a good question. Yeah. And it's funny because this does not seem like just the very fact that it says the bris with Aram and Yitzchak and Yaakov does not seem like it's the bris made with Aram because that was just with Avraham. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, oh, sorry. Sorry. Hold on a second. Michael's next. Yeah, Michael. Um, I'm going to ask the question that you're leading us all to. Should yeah. we make something of the fact that uh, the Pesukim used the word Elohim? Uh, the question I was actually leading you to was the uh, the brisk question, but this is a good question. What's weird about the usage of the word Elohim here? Well, yeah, it's kind of what I mentioned before. It doesn't necessarily have to be about God. Uh, no, everyone holds this about God. Yeah, everyone holds oh. this about God. That word is sometimes used not for God, though, right? Uh, yeah, but if it weren't used for God, then it would be plural, and it would be talking about okay. like it, it would be it would be taskmasters, and it would be vayishmau and viru oh, and v yeah. But but whenever you see yeah, we, we treat, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Also, I'm not aware of um, uh, prayers to, the concept of prayers to the uh, taskmasters. It grammatically could, could mean that. And remembering the bris, yeah, I didn't know they knew about the bris. Yeah. So, but what's weird about using Elohim here? Should be Yudke Vavke, no? Yeah, why should be Yudke Vavke? Uh, I mean, that's the one that's revealed to God. That's the special relationship with the Yom. Like, even in the bris ben Sarm, it's saying that the word of Yudke Vavke came to Abraham. Yeah, so so the, the general principle that Michael's referring to here is that um, uh, Yudke Vavke is Midas Arachmin and Elohim is Midas Aden, right? So why is this well, entire, yeah? It fits very well because it says done enough. So you, you keep on you keep yeah, on going to the Brisbane of I, I would love to give a share in the Brisbane of Sarim, but that's not what the share is on. I, I only went to the Brisbane of Sarim to show that that's not, again, spoiler alert, that Sforno is not going to take us in that direction. Okay. Okay, but I'm saying it could be a judgment. It doesn't need to be. Any... Right. Right. It could be a judgment. But here's the thing: if I asked you who is responding to crying and right. calling out, you know, and uh, and the the promise with Abraham, I mean, I believe Michael's right, although I didn't look at it. Uh, it's UK Valke, right? Who who made the bris? Or am I wrong about that? I looked it up to check. It says you looked up to check? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm just going to put it. Why is this entire thing uh, framed in terms of Elohim, uh, which, is, uh, which is Midas Hadin, rather than uh, Yudke, Yudke Vavke, which is Midas Harachamim? Okay, the latter uh, would be more appropriate for responding to outcries uh, uh, and is the name for in, in, in the bris, being a Basarian. Yeah, and uh, I guess with the Avos in general, I mean, a, a, a lot of things with that, yeah. Uh, kind of adding to four, did you yeah. forget? Okay, good, right. So um, regarding uh, remember, did God forget? No, right? I mean, so what does it mean then, right? right. So what does it mean? All right. Uh, I think those are the main questions. I mean, there, there are probably some more minor questions here. Um, any other uh, questions that we see? I guess, I mean, okay, we, we asked, yeah, what does it mean that God saw? Uh, yeah, oh, I just want to modify this. One. Um, what does it mean by the anthropomorphisms? And what is their interrelationship? In other words, it says God saw and knew I mean that's kind of problematic because God doesn't need he doesn't need to see in general. But even if you are using seeing and it's not like God needs to see and then know, right? Yeah. That's kind of a shot question. Why is the why is why are the Jews suddenly sobbing? Okay, that's another good question. A good shot question. Yeah. Um, uh, what? Uh, what about the king dying? What about the king dying prompted the Jews sobbing? Yeah. Um, uh, just another uh, um, question within number four here is: Don't doesn't God need to see Bnei Israel and know them before He responds to their tefillah and their outcry? I mean, no, first He hears them, then He sees them. 
He hears them, they sees them. Yeah, right. he heard there was a racket of these yeah. crying Jews, and then he went down and was like, "Oh my gosh, what's going on here?" <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, right. Okay, fine. So you, you can you can you can conceive of in different ways. I'll just, I'll so just the question that bugs me the most is the four different crimes because none of them relate to each other. It seems like there's a yeah. lot of outcry, and each one is like a different meaning. And then God's hearing one that's not any of the three. It's yeah, strange language. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so we got our questions. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do the fact gathering part of the investigative journalism of Sworno, which is to read through the Sworno's comments. And what I've tried to do is like this: I translated Sworno's comments on these psukim, but then whenever Sworno in his commentary quotes another pasuk, I went there and translated his comments on that as well. Yeah. Please add one more question. Yeah. What did God know? What did God know? Okay, good. Um, yeah. So. Uh, Let's actually, you know what? Uh, yeah, what did, so I think, what did God, we are as an issue, yeah, what did God know? Yeah, it's the only one. Okay, um, uh, what did God know? Yeah, okay, so here we go. Um, so first thing he says here is um, uh, in those many days. Okay, so in those many days, oh yeah, Yosef, you, okay, I, I, you had your hand up. You know, the question, it's possible we already asked your question in your absence. Uh, do you want you to say what your question is and I'll add it if it wasn't there? Yeah, uh, my question was is that why, why did, what, did the, um, did the tefillah cause the remembering? And if you say that, the, if, or not even, I mean, I'm jumping a step, but why did the calling out cause remembering? Like, shouldn't God either just remember because of the bris or yeah. it was tshuva and therefore he should just save them? Okay, right. good. So those are both good questions, and uh, and we list them. Although you know we didn't list your question about tshuva, so we'll incorporate the tshuva thing here, right. which is um, what point two? What what are they doing? Yeah, what are they doing? Okay, right, right. Uh, I'm just gonna add this though, just so we we remember. Um, was there tshuva involved? Okay, yeah. Okay, so now we begin our Sforno quest here. Okay, so first we have on twenty three. In those many days, so from the day that Moshe fled Egypt in his youth until Gershom was born, uh, that's the many days. Okay, so really it's many, I think you might even translate as many years. Uh, for then Moshe was close to 80 years old because Eliezer was born on Moshe's mission of God to Egypt, at which point he was 80 years old. I don't know how old you picture Moshe when he went to Egypt, uh, sorry, when he went to Midian. How old do you picture him? Midian? Yeah, like when he flew, fled the... Uh, yeah, I also picture him as like his early 20s, you know. Yeah, so Sworno does use the word be do so in his youth. I don't think he means like a yellow, like a kid, but he was pretty young. And this is the other thing also I didn't really realize. He has Gershon like right then, right? He named him when he was a stranger in a strange land. Eliezer is 60 years older than Gershon, which I just, that's just not how I picture it because by the time Moshe leaves, he's, he's 80, you know? So just, you know, filling in the, the facts here. Okay. Okay, so that is just giving us context and that really answers our first question, which is, well, no, it doesn't answer our first question. Okay, fine. All right, next. The Yamas Melech Mitzrayim, the king of Egypt died. So the king who had pursued Moshe, which is why he named his son afterwards Eliezer, because then he knew that he had escaped and was saved from the sword of Paro. Okay, that's just explaining why he named him Eliezer and which king. Okay, Vayizaku. Here's where we get our first clue. And this one I'm gonna read in Hebrew. Vayizaku, zaku mikeev lev al avodasan. They cried out out of the pain of their heart from their avoda. Okay, Kenyan, as it says in Shayahu, Helili uh, Shaar Ziiki ear, whale o gate cry out of city. I don't know what the context is in Yeshayahu, but the point is that this is psychological, a uh, crying from psychological anguish. Okay, so let, let's actually make a list here. Um, as to like physical. Yes, as opposed to physical, right? Okay. So you notice he does not define what anacha is. Okay. Um, and the, and it says Bnei Israel the Anhu Bnei Israel Min Ha'avoda they had Anacha from the work. So do you think it's reasonable to say according to Sforno if Zaka means uh, crying from psychological anguish and Anacha is also coming from the work? I think it stands to reason that Anacha is from the physical exertion, physical pain of the work. He doesn't say, and I assume he doesn't say because it's it's obvious. Okay, we'll we'll put it in brackets just so we know that it's not Sforno. Also, it's interesting because it's, they saw they they anathod from the work, yeah. And then also, additionally, they saw it. And exactly, yeah, it was both, right? 
Um, it's not like it wasn't directly from the work because it wasn't physical. Correct. So I'm going to answer a question not from the Swarno because he doesn't answer it. What about the king, di the king dying prompted the Jew sobbing? Anyone know the, um, I think there's like a shot answer people give. I don't know who says it though. Probably that the new king was even worse or something. So that's one possibility is the new king was worse. I feel like though that might have, uh, it m it's hard to know what the puzzle should and shouldn't have said. But uh, I think given the fact that later on in the story, we see that after Moshe and Aaron go to Paro and he refuses to let them go, then it says Paro increased the workload. And earlier in the story also says that he increased the workload. Seems like if there was some sort of modification, then it would have uh, said so. So we'll, we'll put yourself in the Israel shoes. Yeah, Michael. Um, I would say that they were upset because they knew they were about to be transferred to somebody else. Meaning while Paro was alive, he could have freed them but after he dies, the next king's going to want to try out his newfangled slaves before freeing them immediately. Interesting. Okay, that's definitely possible. That's definitely possible. I heard an answer that they basically hoped that new king would come along and then change things. And the king didn't change things. And so the crying was not just the psychological thing from the Avoda, but the dashing of their hope, that they hoped that things would change. New king comes along and everything is exactly the same. You know, which would fit into why the tour doesn't mention like anything that changed, you know. Yeah, so I, I'm fine saying that. Okay, so that's we got Anacha speculatively, we have Zaaka uh, uh, actually. Okay, now it gets a little bit more complex. And their outcry from the work went up to Elohim. So this is Shava'a, not because of their tshuva and their tefillah. Uh, good question. I think right here it implies that there was not tshuva. In other words, they didn't do tshuva right. and also. Not because the tefillah is a little uh, ambiguous here, okay? Because uh, it doesn't say that they cried out to God, but it doesn't say that by Naga either. But because God is zealous against the cruelty of the oppressors, as it says, I have also seen the oppression. Okay, so show so, up. Yeah. So why is that a, because of their cries? That should be because, be a, because of the cruelty. Ah, right? that is what Forno is saying. Okay, so what he's saying is that Shava here, I'm just going to type it out here. So Shava. Uh, Shava'a equals um, the crying of victimization at the hands of oppressors. And just to give another example of this, uh, and he's saying not, wait, not, because, not a crying of tefillah and tshuva. Mm -hmm. Okay. And can you, I mean, maybe I don't need to give an example, but can you give an, ex can you think of an example in, in Chumash or Tanakh where God is um, not responding to a cry of tefillah and tshuva, but he's responding to a cry because oppressors are oppressing someone. I can think of two cases. One is a story, one is a hal uh, halacha. Oh, with the gar and the somim. Yes, exactly, yeah. So with um, the the Yisomim and Almanos, I forgot if there's a Gera Pasuk also, but it's Yisomim and Almana. So it says that if you oppress the widow and orphan, then I will hear them and I will make your kids into orphans and your wife is into widows, right? Which is a very mafia type threat of like killing okay. you, you know, but um, yeah. So there, it's not like the orphan is, uh, is like a tzaddik and like the tshuva. It's that God is responding to oppression of these, uh, of these victims. You know, I think there, there are something about Garim also, you know, uh, and then the other one, what's the story? There's a story uh, where there was a, um, uh, a, a tremendous oppression of people and uh, God responds to the cry. It's in Bracious. I hope I'm right. <laughs> is that uh, Sodom? Yeah, Sodom, right? Uh, right. Because right. it says that, um, this is in Shemel, so I'm not going to find the Sodom right now, but it says, Hakata'akasa um, uh, uh, that if the outcry that reaches me from Sodom is such and such, then I, I, I will know. So it was, it, Sodom was wicked, right? And they were tormenting people and the people who were the tormenting were not tzaddikim, you know? And we know that because there weren't even 10, 10 tzaddikim, right? But it was, it was, God was responding to the fact that there is a violence. And by the way, just a side point, Radak on the beginning of Yonah asks the question of why God sent Yonah to Nineveh when Nineveh was completely a non-Jewish city of evildoers. And you don't see God like just intervening and sending Jewish prophets to like all non-Jewish societies. So he says that God responds to Hamas, to violence that's being done, you know, violent robbery that's being done. 
Uh, you see that by the Mabul, you see that by Sodoma and Amora. Uh, I'm not saying that this was that, but like it's in the same general category here. Okay, so that's Shava. Yeah. Does that have to do with Nineveh? In that case, I mean, it's super handy. Uh, it, what does it have to do with Nineveh? Because in Nineveh, that was their sin, is that they were uh, engaging in, in uh, Hamas. Um, okay, now the final piece is the Na'aka. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, not yet. Uh, so uh, Sforna quoted 3.9, uh, when God says, I also saw their oppression. So this is in Hashem's speak, uh, speech to Moshe at the, at the snap of the bush, which says, and now behold, the outcry of the children of Israel has come up to me, and I have also seen the oppression that Egypt is oppressing them. Okay, we're going <laughs> to go back to add things. Sa'aka now. Okay, it says Sa'aka there. Uh, so we're going to add this to the list, even though it's not in our Pesukim, but Sforno brings it in. Okay, uh, Sa'aka, and we might as well get uh, Na'aka there also. Um, you know, if you were really into Yetzirah Mitzrayim and you had uh, five daughters, you can name them Anaka <laughs> Zaka. That would be bad names. All right. Um, uh, so um, we're going to not look at the Sforno on this part, but, but the Sforno only quoted the last part. I've seen the oppression. So here's what Sforno says there. Uh, I have also saw the oppression. Oh, I forgot to finish translating this one. So Mitzad Rov Halachat, because of the great oppression, Roy Lanos Es Halochatim. It's fitting to oppress, sorry, to uh, punish the oppressors. Kenyan Veketzef Gadol Ani Katzef Al Goim Hasha Ananim. I was very angry at the tranquil nations. Asher Ani Katzafti Maat Behima Azru Lara. Okay, you know what? I'm not going to look that up right now. We just needed that first part. This is just confirming what I was saying. Is this is not God responding to the cry? This is it's a cry of oppressed people, and God is punishing the evildoers. Okay. Next, now we get to our final piece uh, for the crying part, at least. Vaishmalakim is nakasam. God heard their outcry. They're naka. Tfilas ktsasam. The prayer of some of them. Okay, she is palalu az sadiki hador that the righteous people of the generation davened then. Kaamru, as it says. We cried out again, Tsa'aka to Hashem, and he heard our voice. Okay, so the Tsa'aka and the Na'aka are really the same here. And what are they? Let's just do this here. So the Tsa'aka and the Na'aka is, and the Tsa'aka, Tsa'aka is the Tfila of the few Tzadikim who were in their midst. Okay, now, why few tzaddikim? So I don't think this, yeah? Well, it could be two things. It could be that everyone was praying, but only the tzaddikim's prayers. Like, okay, right, that's right? one possibility. Or only the tzaddikim were praying. Okay, good. So those are two possibilities. And, and keep those two possibilities in mind, because I think it'll be clear from Sforno uh, what he holds later on in a little while. So uh, Sforno has a shita about Kla Yisrael, which if you want to read it, it's really good, but we just don't have time tonight. Uh, read his commentary on chapter one of Shemos. He holds basically that Bnei Israel debased themselves and became corrupt. I think Ramban has a similar theory, um, but Sforno says basically that they were, they became like very degenerate. And when it says that a new king arose who didn't know Yosef, uh, he has a clever shot on that as he says, Yosef was known to be this great Chacham and Sadiq. And the new part was that these low lives came from Yosef, it cannot be, you know? So, and he also says, Vayishutu, that they swarmed. He says they acted like Shratan, you know? Like, so he has a whole thing. He really holds that, that, um, the Bnei Israel were, were, were really, really like lowest of the low, which I don't think is a new idea, but I, I hadn't seen anyone like uh, go through the narrative in the same way that he did. So I, seems to be there weren't that many tzaddikim, right? Sure. Were the other people crying or not? We'll see. But but the tzaddikim is the, are, are the ones who are crying that God heard, right? So it's an interesting thing. Now, if we plug these in, they're, so, okay, they're, they're sobbing because of the physical work. They're crying out in psychological anguish, but that cry is just going nowhere. Okay, then there's Shava'a, they're crying out because of the victimization God is responding to, but he's not responding to them as people, he's responding to like them as objects of violence from the oppressors, and God is really like, that's where the Dananohi is part, parts come, comes in, if you want that there, right, is that God is punishing the Egyptians for oppressing them, but doesn't really matter what these guys, what, what Bnei Israel did, what those Bnei Israel did, God is still going to like uh, um, punish the oppressors. Then you have Vayishma Elohim, that's Na'aka Sam, God heard their Na'aka, okay, um, and you know what, I forgot to do the Unkelos, but let's look at the Unkelos now, because I think Unkelos is going to support this, um, I know I'm not in the right chapter, 
I'll go there after I do the onkelos. Onkelos. Oh, I went too far. Targum onkelos. Um, and we're in Shmos 2. By the way, Michael, the thing I was telling you how to do on all Torah, just find the word that you were looking for, Sarid, click it, and then you'll have the dictionary. Uh, and you want the BDB, uh, which is the, the Comprehensive of Hebrew Dictionary. And then I'll give you all the instances of the Psukim that you could, you could look at them all inside. Um, okay, so anyway, Unkelos says on 23, it was in those many days, Ha'inun, in those many days, Umis Machel Mitzrayim, and the king of Egypt died. These Anahu B'nei Yisrael Min Pulchana, and the, the children of Israel cried out from the work to have a Kshay which was harsh upon them. Um, so that he added, right? That was harsh upon them. That's interesting. Uz Iku, and they cried out. So he, he preserves the word Za'aka. Uz Lekas Kvilton Likadam Adashem Min Pulchana. And they're, uh, they're, uh, what do you call um, their outcry? Kveltahon is just another word for outcry. Went up before Hashem from the work. So that's just a standard English translation where it's saying when Ushmiya kanu Hashem yas kveltahon. And so this is interesting. So he okay. Unglus does seem to be saying differently. Unglus translates shava and naka as kveltahon. So he does say it's the same thing, different than Sforno. Udechir ad Hashem yas kiame, and God remembered His promise. Uh, and it was revealed before Hashem the servitude of Bnei Israel, and God, and He said in His statement to redeem them. Okay, that last part is very unclosey. Yeah. Okay, we'll go back to there if we if we need to, but that's the crying part. Okay, so now we've got the four cries. Okay, so again, Anach has the physical pain, Zag has the psychological anguish, Shava is the crying of victimization, but not Shuv and Tfila. And uh, the Naaka and the Tzaka are the tefillah of the Tzadikim. Okay, so let's go onward. Can you go to the Sforno on Naaka? Yeah, Sforno on Naaka is right over here. Uh -huh. Yeah. How exactly is he getting that, that it was like tefillah? Um, so there is another puzzle in Bamidbar. So this is a trivia question I asked, but I just already gave the answer <laughs> away. Um, there, uh, so I, I asked this on, on, uh, on Facebook and uh, not many people got it. Um, I asked, so I, I, I quoted these Pesukim here. I said, where is this Sipur Yitzis Mitzrayim from? Okay. Uh, and the Sipur Yitzis Mitzrayim said is this one here. Wait, what, what puzzle was it? 2016. Uh, it says it's a very short one. Okay. Um uh Vanesha Mitraim Yamim Rabim. Uh we dwelled in Mitraim for many days, and Egypt uh did evil to us and to our fathers. But Nitak El Hashem, and we cried to Hashem, Vaishma Kulino, and you heard our voice, Vaishlach Malach, and he sent an angel uh or a messenger, Vayotina Mitraim, and he took us out of Egypt. So uh where is this from? This is being told to the king of uh, Edom. Okay, did not know that there was a Sibri Tisprime to the King of Adam. So he's saying that the, um, so Tsaka, I think, does mean Tefillah. Okay, I think. I think that's his premise. And here it definitely means Tefillah because it's saying God heard us. And he's sworn as linking that to the Naaka that what was this outcry that God heard? It must be the same thing that, the, that is described as the Tsaka later on. Yeah. And he also is going to interpret it that way in a little while for he needs Tsaka, Spanish, Israel, Ba'a, Eli. Okay, now here comes the big, big move, okay, which we will not, who thought I was calling it, I think, yeah, okay, so this is the big, big move, all right, and this, this like knocked me out of my seat, okay, so here's where Sforno answers the question of which bris did, did, uh, did he remember, okay, so Vayizkor Lukim Espriso, Sha'amar Vahakimosi Esbrisi Beni Uvenecha Uven Zaracha Acharecha Lios Lacha Lelokim Ulazaracha Acharecha. Um, so uh, I, he says, I will establish my covenant between me and you and between uh, your offspring after you to be for you as a, uh, an Elohim and for your children after you. Which bris is this? That's by Mila, no? That's bris Mila. What? <laughs> okay. In other words, so just to underscore this here, okay, we asked at the beginning of Sheer, 
why did God take Bnei Israel out of Mitzrayim? So we said because of the bris. Which bris? The bris where he says, I'll take them out of Mitzrayim. Coins Forno, that's not the bris. The bris that prompted God to take the Jews out of Mitzrayim was, I will be a God for you and your offspring. Okay. And he goes on, the Ze Yase, and when will God do this? Behol Kareno Elav, whenever we call out to him. That's a puzzle from Devarim, which says why we are going to be viewed as Am Kachem Benavan, which we'll read in a second. Kamosha Heid Achar Kach, the Amro, like it testifies afterwards when it says, Vagam Anishmati as Nakas Bene Israel, Vagomer Vaiz Koras Brisi. And I also heard the outcry of Bene Israel, and I remembered my covenant. So l- l- let's just read this, the fill in the, sworn, the, the other Spornos here, and then we'll try to put it together. Um, we're not going to get to the uh, full idea tonight, but we, we, so it's, you know the, the whole setup, okay? So in the Bris, uh, for the Brismila thing, here's the full Pasuk, which we just read. I will establish my covenant between me and you and between your offspring after you to be a God for you and for your offspring after you. This is when he renames him Avraham, by the way, okay? So Sforno says like this, to be a God for you and for your offspring after you. To associate, excuse me, to associate my name to you without an intermediary, as it is associated with all eternal beings, as it is stated, for everything that God does will last forever. For indeed, those things which are subject to deterioration uh, are not his act without an intermediary. This is kind of a cumbersome language here. In Hebrew, it's a little smoother. Nifsadim. Nifsadim are things that deteriorate, like physical things. Um, because they are deteriorate, because they're subject to uh, entropy. They are not God's direct actions. Uh, in other words, that, that when God relates to purely non-physical things, that's non-physical relating to, to non-physical. But with physical things, there is physicality. You know, there's material, there's matter. So God's not relating directly to them. Okay. He's relating to them via like their material. Um and then he says, Amar in Cain, he says, if so, by establishing the covenant and protecting it, so I translated this as, he stated that by establishing a covenant and keeping it, Abraham and his offspring would be eternal as an entity before him. Okay, so in other words like this, uh, Bnei Israel were just a bunch of individuals, okay? But after this bris, they became a, an entity that God relates to in the same way that he relates to all other things that are not physical, namely directly without an intermediary. And those things are not subject to deterioration. Okay. I know he's throwing in a bunch of like, like metaphysical premises here, but we're, we're just going to follow what he's doing with the narrative. Okay. And then we also have to look at Sforno on the puzzle he quoted, who is a great nation that has a God who is close to it, like Hashem or God, whenever we call upon him. So Sforno says here, the reason it is fitting for you to be considered wise and discerning in the eyes of the people is that God, blessed is he, is close to us whenever we call him. And this indicates that he chose us from among all the people. Uh, and if the people consider you fools, meaning consider B'nai Israel fools, it will be a desecration of Hashem's name when they say to you, these are the people of Hashem. So this has to do with God associating his name to us. And because God's name is associated to us, then when we call out, if God didn't answer us, then that'd be a fill Hashem, right? That's like a Moshe Rabbeinu argument of Lama Yom and Mitzrayim. Okay. So yeah. Yes, yeah, so let's summarize this here. Okay. Sure. So he's saying like this, God remembered his covenant. Which covenant? The covenant that I will be an Elohim to you, which in Sporno terms means I will relate to you directly in the same way that I relate to an entity, uh, like an angel or to a, uh, you know, to a, uh, a species, because back then they held that species were, uh, were eternally existing. And the way that manifests itself is when you call to me, I will respond to you. And what's driving the Sporno to say it's this, um, it's this bris instead of the bris made of Asarim? If you look at the answers in here, like why didn't he just say the obvious answer of Brisbane and Basarim? Because he's responding to Tfilas? He's responding to Tfila, right? So Sforno was bothered by this Pasuk, by the question we had, which is what Bris is there that requires God to respond to Tfila? So that's not the Brisbane and Basarim. Brisbane and Basarim would kick in no matter what. So he was bothered by the fact that th- this is the whole question. This is really Yosef's question that he asked afterwards. Also, what is the interaction? And this is Michael's question of the Mimanov Shah, that what is a bris that God responds to upon hearing outcries? That's the bris of I will be a God for you and your offspring after you. 
Okay, which now makes us wonder, well, what does happen to the Brisbane of Asari? And how does that play into the whole YouTube Spence Ryan thing? Yeah. It seems that like Brisbane of Asari is like stating what's going to happen as like in a matter of fact way. Like that's yeah. going to happen. Yeah, right. You'll do that. Right. But by the Bris later, I didn't actually look at what he said by the Bris, but I just knew it could be saying that I mean, that's more like as a covenant. Early right. Just stating what's going to happen. Okay. So it does, it is true that he's stating what's going to happen. The funny thing though, is that that Brisbane song is called a bris, right? You know, I think what might need to happen, <laughs> we might need to learn what the Brisbane Osarium is according to Sforno and then learn what the bris for Brismila is according to the Sforno and then see how the three interact, you know? Um, investigative journalism. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, so, so to be clear, the reason why it's the, why it's Brismila is because that's one that talks about God will uh, like intervene. For that God will intervene in response to their outcry, which means that right. that see the way it, the way it works in general is like this: is God only relates to entities that have a uh, a real existence, for lack of a better term. Okay, like he only hashgacha pratis, right? Why do we call it pratis? Because it relates to you as a particular. Now, if you are just a a, a dog or a cat or a plant. So your existence as an individual doesn't have any reality before God. Your existence as a species does. Human beings are subject to Hashgacha Pratis as human beings. So Moshe Rabbeinu reaches a level where his soul is, is, you know, reaches a level of perfection. God will relate to his soul on its own, okay? But Klai as a whole, that wouldn't necessarily happen because Klai is just a bunch of individuals. But the Brisbane Musarim, according to Sforno, makes them all be treated as one entity that we like to say in YBT that has a metaphysical reality before God, but no one really knows what that means. <laughs> okay. But Kalei has a metaphysical reality before God. Uh, and, and therefore God relates to, re relates to them as, as a whole and will respond to their outcry. Okay. We have one more Sforno uh, for tonight. Another, another question. Yeah. It's not another question, but also in, in um, with the whole, you know, which name do we use for God? In the first name, like, ah, yes. Uh, okay, well, it also says um, God, God says his name. I don't know but that name, but okay, right. But the difference though is that in the Brismila one, then it it's God says, so it is Hashem speaking, but wait for it. It's Hashem speaking, I think, isn't it? Uh yeah, of Yira Hashem El Abram. But what he says is, I will be an Elohim for you. So that's why the entire uh, Pasuk um, seven. Leos l'chal elokim. I will be for you as an elokim, right? Uh, and your offspring after you. Um, so, uh, and that's that again fits into our. Uh, that would explain why in Shmos here it's only elokim being referred to because this is the bris of elokim, not the bris of Yoki Vavke and and bris of Sorry. Um, okay. One more Sforno, which is the Sforno on Vayeda Elohim, and God knew. Okay, so oh, is this? No, 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 not yet. Uh, one more pasuk, man. Vayar Elohim es Bnei Israel, and Elohim saw Bnei Israel. What does that mean? He is giyah He had hashgacha on them. Velo hisir pana od pana man. He was no longer hiding his face from them. So riya is the opposite of Hester Panim. Hester Panim means remove of Hashgacha, Re'iyah means Hashgacha, okay? As it is stated, I've seen my people for its outcry has come to me. As he testified afterwards in a statement, I have surely seen the affliction of my people in Egypt. So where did he say that? He said that in the burning bush. Okay, I, again, I, 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 without, I was not raised as a, uh, a Jewish child who was fed, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, specific uh, takes on, on Pesukim, what did they tell you as a kid that the burning bush symbolized? What do you, like the event or the actual? Uh, no, the actual, like the, there is a bush that's on fire and the bush is not being consumed, those three it's elements. Uh, what, what do you mean? Well, you know it's God because it's impossible. Oh, well, that's how you know it's God, but 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 God, but but the um, the vision, most of us being shown this vision that symbolized something, yeah? Why a bush on fire? Yeah, or, or what, I mean, Right, it's not possible, so it must be God's doing. Right, but I'm saying though that God was showing Moshe this to, to convey some idea to him, the right? Jewish people, yeah, the Jewish people, right? So what, what what was the Jewish people and what was the? Uh, oh, that will never be destroyed. That's all right. Okay, so the the the, the yeah. bushes, the Jewish people. 
and okay right yeah okay that's what i thought that's what i thought right is that the, i was never told that no. i was never taught that i just figured it out from context yes, when sir. i looked at it but okay, you're right yeah. in, in the education for some reason they don't teach it that way oh really okay fine so i i thought that's what i heard also i, I heard that the, the bush is in israel the fire is the egyptians and the bush not being consumed is that hashem is protecting the jews from being destroyed by the egyptians Okay, fine. So yeah. I don't know if I was taught that, but I feel like I'm recollecting some some long forgotten part of my life. <laughs> yeah, okay. So maybe yeah. I was at some point. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I felt like that was a standard shot. So the Sporno says an interesting different shot. So uh the Pasuk says Hashem saw said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people in Egypt, and I've heard their outcry on account of its oppressors, for I have known its pains. So Sporno says, I've surely seen the affliction of my people. Now, this is where he elaborates on the on the, the na'aka. The righteous of the generation who sobbed and cried out about the iniquities of the generation and about their affliction. So these people, let's look at it in Hebrew because it'd be better. Sadiki Ador Hanenachim Vahanenachim Al Avonos Hador the Al Anyam Umispalim. So they weren't just crying out because they were being afflicted. They were crying out because Ben Israel was in this state of sinfulness, which presumably would not merit an intervention. So they're asking Hashem for help, but also they're bemoaning the state of the of the, of the nation. Okay. Um, uh, and they daven. It was regarding them that an angel of Hashem appeared in the bush. The meaning of I've surely seen is as if to say, even though I have seen the affliction of my people in Egypt, as indicated by the angel in the bush, and even though against their tormentors I will turn a hand, as indicated by the fire in the bush, nevertheless, the Egyptians who torment them will not perish utterly on account of the plagues that I send, as indicated by the statement, but the bush is not consumed. For indeed, the intent in the plagues I bring upon them is not to cut them off and establish Israel in their place, but to save Israel from their hand and establish them in another place. So funny thing here, he's saying, who's the bush? Is Egypt, <laughs> okay? The bush is Egypt and it being burned but not consumed means God will afflict them but not destroy them, okay? And the angel in the bush, uh, which is what the Pazic says, is um, is uh, B'nai Israel. Okay, fine. So that, that, that part's not related to our, our, our narrative. It's yeah. It's not flipping things because it's making the, not the Jews to be like the antagonists, but it's like the judges are, are kind of more just like, like bystanders, like pawns here. Uh, yeah, right. And uh, if Hashem is the fire, Hashem is the antagonist, right? Yeah. yeah towards them, which he was. Okay, last pasuk, Vayeda Elohim and God knew. So just to summarize here, God saw means God was mashkia. God had his mashkia on them. Okay, and that's a me metaphor of, of looking away and then seeing. Okay, Vayeda Elohim and God knew. Yeda nigai lavavam. He knew the afflictions of their heart. Vishahaisa tefilasim. Vitakasim cholave, and he knew that their tefila and their outcry was with all their heart. As it says later on, I have known its pains. Which is the opposite of they sought to trick him with their mouths and deceive him with their tongues and their hearts were not firm with him. So what does this mean? So if you look at Sforno on that Pasuk of I have known its pains, uh, sorry, not on I have known its pains. This is Sforno earlier on the outcry of B'nai Israel. It says, um, uh, the Pasuk says, and now behold, the outcry of the children of Israel has come up to me, and I've also seen the oppression that Egypt is oppressing them. So it says, and now this means it is entirely true, which is the meaning of and now in all places. Indeed, I've known their pains and the afflictions of their heart. Behold, the outcry of the children of Israel has reached me, that I have accepted their prayers, because they called out to me in truth, not in the manner of they attempted to seduce me with their mouths. So he's, he's, so he's learning that Vayar is Hashgacha, and God knew means that it was referring to the sincerity and they're, the fact that they had proper kavana, that they weren't just trying. There is a type of crying out to God where you just basically like are refer, relating to him like a genie and granting a wish. Like, like we don't actually want to change, but we just want you to get us out of here. No, these people actually did shuva. And regarding your original question, does it seem like Sporno is learning that everyone was crying out and God only answered the tzaddikim or only the tzaddikim were crying out? What? Yeah, I think only the tzaddikim were crying out because it sounds like the rest of the people were... Um, were uh, had iniquities, right? And they were not really involved in crying out. And only these tzaddikim were crying out and God responded to them. Oh, so, so then, yeah. So then I have a question now, which is why did everyone get the gula? Ah, why, good why, question. Why was everyone Zochef really the tzaddikim and the only ones who got right. God to take action? Okay, great question. Yeah. Well, as you're saying before, the person made the Jews want an entity of Hashkaka. Yeah. Hashkaka, ah. So when part of the entity is worthy of it, 
Uh, okay, so that's definitely a possibility, and that's very consistent with the Sporno that that the bris is we're in this together, right? We're one entity. So the tzaddikim, almost like Sodom and Amora, right? That if there are enough tzaddikim who are a part of the society, then God will save the entire society on account of the tzaddikim. Here, though, it was even stronger because it was a bris that they were treated as one as one nation. That's definitely a possibility. The only reason I'm questioning it is because of what you said, which is the bris manifestarian, that maybe that played a role also, that maybe these tzaddikim are the ones who merited the intervention um, based on their tefillah, but it could be that the rest of Abraham's offspring merited it through the bris being a yeah. You know, this is where we need to see the, inter the interaction between them. Let's end really quickly by just commenting on our questions, okay? Just to like solidify this. So what about the king dying prompted to do sobbing? So that's Forno did not address, okay? Because, uh, but I, I said that probably because they hope things would change. I'll have to track down who said that. Uh, what's the meaning of the different types of crying? So the anacha is crying from physical anguish, zaka from psychological anguish, shava'a is the victimization of the oppressors, which prompted God to punish the Egyptians. That's the dananochi. And the naaka and the tzaka are the tzaddikim davening. And I think this also explains maybe why it doesn't say that the tzaddikim cried out to answer Michael's question, uh, that it, it's possible that vayizaku that the regular people were just crying out, but the tzaddikim were doing zaka in, in the sense of like zaka based tzara, you know, and God heard that from among them, but, but they were all crying out. Um, why does God say that, why does it say God heard their naka? Okay, fine, that was Michael's question. What's the relationship between these outcries and the bris? So it's the bris of responding to outcries. That's Forno's major move. What about these cause God's response? So that is, is that bris. Would God have remembered the bris otherwise? No, right? Because that bris is only brought, he only brings up the contract when he is crying, you know? Um, that is what the contract says he does. So so it's not a remember like in contrast to forgetting, it's a like a, uh, a a bringing to mind type thing, like because it's relevant, the situation is relevant. Meaning if the, if the Sadiqan didn't do, didn't do this tefillah, then what would happen? What, they, so they wouldn't have been taken out, but they just like- So the, th that's, a, okay, so there, there, the question is what would have happened? We have the Brisbane Imsarim, which seems to still be there, right? To have right. kicked in. There's also another question, which I've conveniently skirted up until this point, because I thought someone was going to ask me about it. I think there's a machlokus about whether the Jews were taken out of Mitzrayim on time or early. Yeah. Okay, and this is part of the question of the 400 years and the 210 years and the different like counts. What do you mean by early? That, that really they were supposed to be in Mitzrayim longer, but things were so bad that God responded and took them out uh, prematurely. What do you mean they were supposed to? Meaning that there's a Midas Hadin thing that, uh, that they were going to be, um, they're supposed to spend 400 years in Mitzrayim, for example, let's say, but then because of, let's say they cried out, you know, then God said, all right, I'll take you out early, you know. Um, uh, I need to look at that machlok as we've shown him, but that's another possibility that God took them out now because of this crying, but if they didn't cry here, God would have taken them out at the appointed time anyway. What exactly were, were the different effects of the, of the oppression and the tefillah? Those are different things. Now. Right, so the oppression resulted in God punishing the Egyptians. Okay. And if the if the Egyptians didn't oppress them, there would not be that same punishment. Right. Okay. The crying is a virtue, uh, is, is because of the hashgacha, that whenever we cry out to God, then he responds to us. Now, it happened to be here, we were crying out because of oppression, and the tzaddikim daven at that point. So it like intersected, you know. So God's going to conveniently take us out simultaneously with punishing the oppressors. Right. But yeah, but it is two different things going on just simultaneously. Okay, okay which bris to God? Remember, we answered that. And the question, though, still remains, what, what happens to the bris of Messiah? How does that inter, uh, interfere? Oh, by the way, this also answers the question, why is this the bris with Avram, and Yitzhak, and Yaakov? Because it's with all of Avram's offspring, right? Uh, what does it mean by the anthropomorphisms? We, we answer that. Heard responds is about tefillah. Remembered is recalling the bris. Seeing is hashgacha, and knowing is is, is uh, judging the quality of their tefillah. And why is this in terms of Elohim? Uh, because this is the, um, the uh, bris made that God says, I'm gonna be an Elohim to you. And also, you know, I don't even think you need to form of that. You could say that if God is responding to a bris, that's a midas adin thing. Bris means a, a, a contract, you know? So it, it, even though the outcry would warrant rahmim, if the crying weren't the triggering of the bris, then that would be Elohim. 
Okay, so as uh, as planned, see, this is how I get myself to figure stuff out. I don't have answers to this, but I figured if I gave here, then it's going to pressure me into figuring out answers. So we have like a week, okay? And uh, and I what I need to do is I need to learn the Brisbane of Sorry, I'm according to Sforno. And I think I also, this is indicating, I think I need to read the Sforno on the dialogue of the burning bush, because that also says stuff, and figure out like what, what exactly happened what here. What questions are thrown in? Well, the main question is what happened, what, how does the Brisbane of Basarim fit into this? Right. into this whole thing and also i kind of want to know like what was this bris to be a god to them i feel like i don't have a full understanding of that like i want to understand that metaphysics a little bit more but the 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 the, the problem is god makes a bris to take them out of its rhyme and that doesn't come up according to Sforno at all right. that's the major problem yeah uh-huh. yeah okay good okay thank you yep thanks for coming okay hopefully to be continuing yeah, all right, have a good so, night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.